Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're chasing some garfish. Just using a float, hopefully you can see it. We've used some burley and we've got some around, so hopefully it won't take too long to get a bite. There's the float going down now. Oh, lost him. <laughs> so much fun. One of the uh, first fish I learned how to catch down in Melbourne using maggots back then. We're using dough today. These are only small, small fish, tiny little mouths. They're great bait to use. Let's see if we can get one straight away. Give it some slack. It's got one. Oh, a little brim. <laughs> There you go, mate. Tiny little brim. Make sure to subscribe, guys, so you don't miss the next episode where I'll um, go into detail on the float rig that I'm using today. We'll also talk about the burley mix and also my dough recipe that I'm using. And uh, yeah, hopefully you may learn a few tricks to catch nice garfish just like this one here. So if you're keen, subscribe and yeah. There's a bite. And we got one. Yeah, tell you what, little garfish, they fight so well for their size. There we go. Another little one. Get him in the esky before he falls off. Oh. Oh. That's not what we want. Come here. That's what I mean. They fall off, they go down the rocks and you never see them again. Good old dough. Costs next to nothing for bait and you can turn them turn them into a good feed or into bait. Let's see if we can get another one. Always remembering to throw a little bit of burley. Not a lot, just a tiny bit, keep it going. Keep the fish in the area, keep attracting more fish in. There we go, got one there. Only a tiny one. <laughs> See what I mean? They fight like crazy, they look like little marlin. That's a perfect bait size, that one. That, that guy is destined for the freezer to be used for tailor bait or snapper bait later on. The float won't always go under, sometimes it'll rise up in a uh, quill float, it'll rise up to the surface and then lay down flat. That means the fish has picked up the bait, picked up that weight, and then your floats become more buoyant, so it's come to the surface. That means you've got a bite, so instead of striking like crazy, just wind up the slack and see if you can feel the weight of the fish, and then strike. Traditionally the float would just go straight under, or move to the side like it just did then, so it's just been dragged to the side. So I've got one here. There's a little bite. Yeah, I got one. Another nice little gar. I'm using dough for bait. Just a little bit of flour, water, and I like to put a bit of tuna oil in the mix. Very small hooks, these are size 10 long shank hooks. And you don't want a lot of bait, you probably want about the size of a pea. I'm using two hooks because the bait is very soft and the fish will take it off your hook pretty easily. Gives you a second chance in case they do. And sometimes if you're lucky you'll actually hook two fish. We're not using any fancy gear. It's a cheap, cheap reel. The rods, 
a Jarvis Walker rod, a Jarvis Walker reel. It's probably a $50, $60 combo. What I like about this rod, it's really whippy and really light. So great for float fishing, so you can cast a, a light weight back out there. Garfish, I thought they're good little fighters, but they're only small fish, so you don't need anything heavy. Six pound line, that's all I use. And you know, when you're on the rocks or the jetties, you can get banged up and and it doesn't really matter because it's only cheap. You can catch garfish pretty much year round here in southeast Queensland. I tend to fish for them more in the warmer months. Um, that's mainly because well, you get windier days which you can't take the boat out so this is a good alternative and plus I like to stock up on bait so I like to stock up my winter supply of garfish over the summer months. If you ever get a couple big ones, like to cook them up as well. So, <laughs> oh, he's a jumper! Look at him go! <laughs> now, that's a good size bait. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> Whoop. See ya. There we go. Got him that time. little garfish. Get him in the esky. There you go, not a bad catch. A couple of hours of fishing. They were a bit finicky today, a bit hard to catch, but we did manage a few, so there's a fair bit of bait for our tailor fishing and snapper fishing. So there you go, that's a snub nose gar. Beautiful eating and fantastic bait. We did get one little seagar fish. Main difference being that beak. So that's a seagar. That's a great little bait. And there your snub nose has got no beak. Some beautiful bait collected today. Hopefully I can turn this into a nice big snapper or a tailor off the beach. So please make sure to subscribe and who knows in the coming months you might get to see a video of me doing just that. Thanks for watching everyone.